Hi, and welcome to our chapter seven review. Goes like normal. So, read the content. Piggies are great. Information on the frappy, 15 minute timer. Remember to pause because here come the questions. So, slide A. B. C. And D. So, solutions are coming up. I suggest you attempt this on your own. See what you can do or watch the video. It's up to you. So, the principal of a large high school is concerned about the number of absences for students at his school. To investigate, he prints a list showing the number of absences during the last month for each of the 2,500 students at the school. For this population of students, the distribution of absences last month is skewed to the right with a mean of mu is equal to 1.1 and a standard deviation ah, of, come on, stop it, standard deviation of 1.4. Suppose that a random sample of 50 students is selected from the list printed by the principal and a sample mean number of absences is calculated. Cool. Well, we have a bunch of information we need right then and there. We need to know that our population is 2,500. Um, we have a sample size of 50 it is random lots of awesome words right there uh, we've got a population um, mean of 1.1 and a, a population standard deviation of 1.4 what is the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample mean shape of the sampling distribution of the sample mean well this is just the uh definition of the shape of a sampling distribution, which should be normal. And so in that con practice, you can practice the conditions of normal for sampling distributions and blah, 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 and all that kind of information if you'd like. Otherwise, we can just pop on in and I can remind you, CLT, that center and limit theorem is also gonna play into effect. And how do I know? Well, first of all, they did not tell me this information was normal. In fact, this said that it was skewed to the right. Because they said that it was skewed to the right, I have to think one step further. Not only because I'm taking a sampling distribution, is it going to start to normalize, but it's because of that central limit theorem where n has to be greater than or equal to 30. And now you know that it's going to just going to normal, normalize out. You've seen it in lots of different models. You can YouTube it. Um, you can see like they take all sorts of really funky looking original random samples that just look like chaos. They don't look like any sort of pattern that you could understand and when you start to get to 30 to 50 to 100 all these different samples that you keep doing hey oh my gosh you start to see a normal distribution appear so uh, the sampling distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal because the sample size is large 50 is greater than or equal to the minimum 30 that we need for normality to start to appear when you pull a sampling distribution need more practice blah, blah, blah. What are the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean? Cool. Well, here's some general information that we know. Because our sampling distribution is going to begin to normalize, then that means my mean value of the population is automatically going to be equal to the mean value of the sampling distribution, or, you know, approximately, right? You know, we've proved this to ourselves mathematically. This absolutely happened. So immediately we know this is just going to be 1.1. Great. What about standard deviation? We can't just say that 1.4 from the population automatically applies. It doesn't work that way. We have to think of it just a little bit further. In fact, we have a nice neat, oops, I should say sampling distribution. We have a nice neat formula for that. We take the population's uh, <clears throat> standard error and we divide by the square root of the sample size, which was 50, right? Yeah, 50. And we end up with a number, I don't, yes, I do remember 0 0.198 is our standard deviation of the uh, sampling distribution. Ta-da, we have that information. But just to make sure you remember, this has to meet conditions. In order to extrapolate that population standard deviation in, we have to make sure we've met the 10% condition, and we surely have 50 uh, times 10 is 500, and that is smaller than the original 2,500. Boom. So we can see that nice neat wrap up right here. Stand, uh, mean, because of sample size, we meet our 10% condition. Here's our error. Ta -da! All right, here's more practice from Khan Academy on the mean and standard deviation. 
Question C, what is the probability that the mean number of absences in a random sample of 50 students is less than one? So we're dealing with probabilities of sampling distributions. So what I wanna look for here is that my sampling distribution less than one. Great, that's the information from the question that I need. We can do a couple of things with this information. Oh, actually, I know I gave myself more room, yeah. So we can do a couple of extra things here. First of all, we're definitely gonna talk about the calculator side, but because we're doing this online, I'm gonna show you the online calculator side as well. But first I'm gonna do it by hand in the off chance that's an expectation or, uh, of yourself, like you have no access to some sort of calculator resource. So, uh, I'm so sorry, lost my train of thought. I'm gonna find, since we're dealing with probability and I know that this is sampling distribution, so um, I'm gonna be, gonna be able to pull my z-score. And so I'm going to use that formula and I have, and it equals negative 0.51. From my Z, I end up with, oops, that should say Z, Z, less than negative 0.51. That's a Z, guys, I swear, uh, is going to be equal to 0.305. That's that little left tail. So we have a 31% chance that, and then I would repeat this sentence right here, uh, that the mean number of absences is less than one in a sample of 50 students, right? You just repeat back and get an information. But I'd like to show you, before I show you that reset, I want to show you the calculator form. So if you have a TI, Inspire, or uh, 84, um, you would do a normal CDF. And you can Google or walk yourself through those steps for yourself, or you could just literally type in normal CDF. Your lower bound, you know, negative 999 or negative 1,000. Our upper bound is one, right? Because we want to approach one. Less than one would be approaching that one value. Our standard deviation, or sorry, our population mean, 1.1 uh, sampling distribution mean, and our standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Sorry, this should be sampling distribution. Boom. You would get 0.3. Uh, lost my numbers somewhere over there 0 0.3050 but not all of us have access to a TI Inspire or a TI uh, 84 so if you go to statisticshelper.com I think um, they have all sorts of fun cal calculators but they have a normal CDF calculator right there I've even shown it to you with all of our numbers for this particular question plugged in so here is that wrap-up screen of our answer cool moving on so more practice from Cron about probabilities. And finally, because the population distribution is skewed, the principal is considering using the median number of absences last month instead of the mean. You know, I commend the principal. That's some good thought process. Uh, they want to use that to summarize the distribution. Most of us would agree. But you come in and you're like, hey, I'm a statistician. And you say, describe. So they want you to describe how the principal could have used a simulation to estimate the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample median or samples of size 50. So really, they're asking you to write in one or two sentences how to set up a simulation. Well, their write-up was perfect, so I'm gonna remind you about that CLT. And let's jump on him. Take many, many random samples of size 50. For each sample, calculate the sample median. Finally, calculate the standard deviation of the distribution of sampling medians. I challenge you to think about why would this be a more effective method of comparing, of summarizing the distribution instead of the principal just using the median value. Challenge you to think about that. So we're done with our information. Here's our practice for the central limit theorem. If you want to challenge yourself one step further, you surely can take the unit exam that's not part of the assignment. Don't stress about that. At this point, you can skim through the PDF or you can go directly to the assignment. The assignment are three multiple choice, blah, 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 blah. You've seen this a million times. See you later.